here in Vancouver today. Right behind me is the Gastown Steam Clock. <laughs> I'm gonna take you around Vancouver, beautiful city, but I do have some warnings for anybody that is coming here that you should know before you visit this place. The first thing you should know about Vancouver is the stunning natural beauty. I've been to every large city in North America, and I will tell you, you could make a case that Vancouver tops them all, at least with the natural setting. You've got the coastal mountains, you've got the view of the harbor, and it's juxtaposed against an amazing skyline. But I've got to warn you, the Vancouver skyline, while beautiful, is a little bit tricky. What you have here is a covenant that prevents buildings from rising taller than 650 feet. That's 200 meters. What that means is a lot of these buildings are about the same height. In fact, there's over 600 high-rise buildings in downtown Vancouver, and about 25 of them are in that 400 to 600 foot range. What there is not is there's not any super tall structures like you'd find in Toronto with the CN Tower or in New York with One World Trade Center. So there's not really a great observatory. In fact, I'll warn you, the one paid observatory that you can visit, the Vancouver Lookout, only rises up about 460 feet high. These are some pictures I took at the top. The view's okay, and if you go, you definitely want to go at sunset. Vancouver has some spectacular sunsets. But as you can see, I'm not on top of anything. It's really not that great of a view. So I was with my son, and believe it or not, we had a difficult time finding a great public viewing spot where we could see the city in spectacular fashion. Now, maybe there's a private patio on some rooftop. If you know something, leave a comment below. Turns out finding a good view of Vancouver is kind of hard. We thought going to Vancouver's Queen Elizabeth Park, which is located a couple miles away from the downtown area, but looks northward and it's perched up on a hill, we thought this would be the ideal spot. And apparently years ago, it did have a great view of the skyline, but in recent years, the trees, the foliage, they've all kind of overgrown and blocked that skyline. A lot of these benches, like this one we're sitting on, they're literally looking out at nothing. Nature. There would, yeah, you know, nature, it's beautiful, but it would be so awesome if there were a view of the downtown area, which skyline's just right over here. But unfortunately, there's not really a good skyline view that we can find in Queen Elizabeth Park. If you really want an epic view of Vancouver and the surrounding area, the best way to get it is to go on a seaplane. You can buy tickets at a lot of tour operators. These tickets, I gotta warn you, cost about $100 a person. But for about a half hour, you go up to about 2,000 feet high, you fly around the harbor and the surrounding area, and the views are unrivaled. Now you're not gonna be alone. Chances are you're gonna be crammed into a plane with as many as a dozen other people. The other thing is you probably gotta book ahead of time, maybe several days ahead of time if you're planning on doing this anywhere from May through September, which is the high season. But if you're looking for that epic skyline view, this is by far the best way you're gonna find it. Our pilot even circled around a cruise vessel going out to sea just before we landed. Now here's a warning, and it's a good warning. You do not want to miss out on the Asian cuisine when you're here in Vancouver. There are literally hundreds of great Asian places to eat from Korean, Indian, Thai, Chinese. You gotta remember, Metro Vancouver, about 50% of the population comes from Asian descent. It's a very ethnically diverse community. Here I am with my son at a Chinese dim sum restaurant that was really good. Another night we joined a colleague of mine and went to Korean barbecue. You don't want to miss out on the excellent Asian food when you're here in Vancouver. Now let me tell you, I love Asian cuisine, but I don't love it for breakfast. If you're looking for some good breakfast options in one place, Come here, this is the Granville Island Public Market. 
Now, I've got to warn you, this place is touristy, but touristy in a good way. There's a lot of fresh produce. There's a lot of pastries, a lot of places where you could pick up a good breakfast or lunch. If you like donuts and you don't mind waiting in line, check out Lee's Donuts. Popular place. It's been around over 40 years and it'll satisfy your sweet tooth. Now you can take an Uber anywhere in Vancouver easily, but while you're here at the Granville Island, you may as well take a ferry. They have these small little ferry boats. Uh, it's called the False Creek Ferries. And basically you can get on these and go up and down the entire southern end of the downtown area from the Olympic Village all the way to the Maritime Museum. It's pretty cheap and kind of fun to take these little boats. I recommend it. One place the False Creek Ferries won't take you is to Stanley Park, which in my opinion is the crown jewel of Vancouver. Stanley Park literally takes up half of the entire downtown peninsula. The 600 high-rise buildings, those are on one half. Stanley Park is on the other half. And it is a primitive park. Most of it is densely forested. Now the popular activity here is to take the bike trail all the way around the park. It's around six miles long. It follows the outer edge of the park right along the coastline. It only takes you about an hour to complete this loop, but that assumes you don't stop along the way. And I'm gonna warn you, there's a few places you're gonna wanna stop along this trail. Early on, there's a spot you can pull over and take some pictures of the skyline. It's actually one of the best spots I found to view the city that's not in a seaplane. You've also got this hidden little grove. It's not viewable from the trail, but you can easily find it on a map. It's got these totem poles. You'll definitely want to pull over here and check it out for a few minutes. You've got the girl in wetsuit statue, which is a little bit reminiscent of the Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen. As you get further out on the peninsula, you're going to be right along this seawall here. Now be careful, it does get a little bit crowded, but the views here are spectacular, especially if you go around sunset. Now there's also a restaurant here in Stanley Park. It's called the Tea House, and you'll see signs for it. The views here are great. So is the food. I've only been here for brunch, but I can tell you this Eggs Benedict was spectacular. In the end, I just think Stanley Park is not to be missed when you're visiting Vancouver. Wonderful place. Next, we're gonna head out of Vancouver, across the Lionsgate Bridge, over to North Vancouver. Now, I've gotta warn you, a lot of times there's traffic here on the Lionsgate Bridge. It can take you a half an hour in traffic to get across here, even though you're only going about three miles to the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. Now, this is a very popular attraction, so there's gonna be a lot of people here. And this suspension bridge goes for about 450 feet. Now I'll warn you, this ravine is not extraordinarily deep. I think you're about 200 feet up, but this bridge is very safe. You're not gonna fall off it. However, it is bouncy. You kind of move around a lot on this. So even though it's safe, you could lose the grip on your phone. Hang on to your phone or even just put your phone away as you cross this thing, because you could lose it if you're not careful. Now as you get to the other side, they have another trail. It's called the Tree Tops Adventure and you have a lot more suspension bridges, smaller ones. They take you from tree to tree throughout the forest. It takes about 20 minutes to walk through the whole thing. Now you'll go back across the bridge the way you came, and there's another little trail called the Cliff Walk that's definitely worth checking out. Now the general consensus about this place, if you were to go online and read reviews, is that it's a great place to visit, but also very expensive for what you get. And I concur with that opinion. 
I like this place and there's a lot to see here, but you're kind of done after about 90 minutes, maybe two hours. And it costs about $50, that's 50 US dollars for an adult to visit here. It's a little bit less if you're a student or you're a resident of British Columbia. So beautiful, but expensive, but that doesn't seem to be hurting them. There's a lot of people that come to this place. I wanna talk for a moment about Whistler. Whistler is the mountain resort north of Vancouver. Now you've got to drive here and I've got to warn you, it is a two hour drive from Vancouver to Whistler, but the highway is stunning. They call it the Sea to Sky Highway. Now once you get here to Whistler, there's a lot to do. There's the center of town where there's shops, restaurants. It's a lot like an Aspen, Colorado, a Park City, Utah, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Whistler is the location where a lot of events were held for the 2010 Olympic Games. So there's a lot of activities here. There's some big mountains nearby, a lot of hiking in the wintertime, obviously skiing. I'm not gonna focus too much on Whistler. There are other YouTube videos and you can do some research on a lot of the outdoor activities, but check out what's going on in town as well, especially in the summer evenings. We found that the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra was playing, so we went to that, it was a lot of fun. I will say whether you're going to or returning from Whistler, there are a couple of pullouts on the highway, viewing spots where you can take in the view of the coastal mountains. Definitely worth stopping for just a few minutes. As I'm showing you some of this modern architecture that you find in Vancouver, I do want to warn you, Vancouver is a seasonal town. If you come here in March or April or maybe November, Things are reasonably priced, seems like a nice place. You come here during the summer months from May through September, prices are sky high. That's the cruise season. People are coming into town, they're leaving on an Alaskan cruise, and you're gonna pay a lot of money for hotel rooms and rental cars. Just to give you an idea, an okay hotel room, like a Hampton Inn or Holiday Inn, is gonna cost you $300 a night or more. So just be forewarned and have your pocketbook ready. I do want to talk a little bit about the neighborhoods of Vancouver. I began this video showing the Gastown Steam Clock. And that little neighborhood, the Gastown neighborhood, is phenomenal. All sorts of little restaurants and shops. That area is very walkable, seems very safe. In fact, my son and I found a couple of great restaurants, including a breakfast place called the Twisted Fork. My son and I both agreed this place had some of the best French toast that we've ever had. Now, as we were walking around this neighborhood, we noticed on a map that Chinatown was only a few blocks away. We thought it'd be a good idea to go check it out. After all, Chinatown in New York City, kind of a cool place. Chinatown in a lot of different cities, a fun place to walk around and check out. So here's a warning for you, and kind of a serious warning. As we walked from the Gastown neighborhood over towards Chinatown, which is only like three blocks away, we discover a terrible homelessness problem. Vancouver is really struggling with this right now. There's all sorts of drug use and homelessness. The streets smell like urine. There's even kind of a tent city going on. And it's quite prevalent. It's not just one street corner or two street corners. It's kind of a whole area. And it's not a safe place to be. So definitely don't go to Chinatown right now. And just be very aware because this problem persists only a block or two away, sometimes even only a few steps away from the nicer places like Gastown that you may be visiting. In the end, I just gotta say, Vancouver is a great place to visit. Yeah, it has its flaws, every city does, but this place is stunningly beautiful and there's a lot of great activities. I definitely recommend coming to Vancouver when you have the opportunity. <laughs>